All right, welcome back to Big Board. Thought we'd take a look at uh, the rules for North Africa 41 and just sort of get a quick level set on things that I personally notice that are different uh, from other games in, in the Zoc Bond series. That's the Zone of Control Bond series for Stigler, just in case he gets upset with me saying the word Zoc. I'm going to use the word Zoc going forward in this video. I will say Zoc a lot. Uh, I will also say Ezoc, enemy zone of control. Forewarned is forearmed. All right, let's have a look. So there's some interesting things in here that uh, are different. And of course, uh, we need to uh, appreciate the, one of the challenges or you know one of the opportunities, I guess, is, with this particular uh, series of games from Mark Simonich is that there are an, a number of similarities across the board from Caucus's campaign all the way through where there are these notions, uh, at least I think Caucus's campaign had it, but I'm not sure. Uh, ideas around elite bonuses and armor bonuses and concepts around uh, uh, tactical movement and extended movement and things like that. But sometimes there are slight differences or nuances in how they're applied. And that can sometimes cause a little bit of confusion when you're moving from one module to another. So I <clears throat> I decided to make some notes. And I, my, my hope here is that I can kind of succinct, succinct, succinctly, excuse me, uh, note those differences that I found that were noteworthy and share some of those with you. And then perhaps we can draw at the end of the video, maybe draw some conclusions out of those to see uh, where where the gameplay uh, and the focus might be and some of the things we need to keep in mind when we are playing the game. And I'm, a, I'm about to get this all set up, but I've been tardy in doing so. So there are, there's a concept around uh, basically roads and tracks. There's a main road, the, the Via Balboa, I think it is, or Balbia, whatever it is. One of the, the primary routes uh, from basically from uh, uh, you know, uh, Benghazi all the way through to Alexandria and beyond, uh, going both east and west. And then there are tracks, basically. And uh, it, that uh, necessarily affects how you move. There are also what I would call wasteland areas. There's uh, desert areas that the most you can move is two hexes in. Which kind of presupposes that there are no tracks and it's rough terrain and all this sort of good stuff. So those things were noteworthy. And we can look here in it's a sequence of play, which we don't really need to focus too much on because it's pretty standard stuff. There's a prep phase where you're going to get your reinforcements and your resource points and supply points, which become important in this game. Then there's the action phase, supply attrition, and then uh, we go over to uh, uh, the allied player turn. They're going to do some event business and movement, combat and <clears throat> recovery, their supply phase and then the delay phase, which is a, a unique concept for this game. And then the access player is going to do the same thing. Stacking is not by number of units, it's by number of stacking points, which are these numbers here, the two, for instance. Uh, so that's uh, unique. Uh, I think I think most of the other oh well, could be you know what there could be stacking points in some other games so I shouldn't say it's unique. Uh, so movement, if we look at movement, uh, <clears throat> there are in extended move. So on normal roads, uh, on a, on this highway concept, uh, you can uh, you can move up to eight movement points or uh, four movement points extra if you're a track unit. Uh, when you're using extended movement, actually, is that correct? Stand by. Yeah, it's not, uh, it, I, I knew that was different. It's not uh, movement points, it's hexes. So it's additional uh, additional hexes that you're going to get to move. So you'll see here, we've got a, an infantry unit. It'll get to move its one, two, three uh, hexes. A non mechanized unit spends its entire movement moving along a highway and does not move, start, does not start or move adjacent to an enemy combat unit. It may move eight highway hexes instead of three. 
So you're getting a bonus of the five, uh, uh, five hexes. I'm not sure why I had eight and four down here. I think that must have been the net total. But uh, likewise, uh, da, 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 if you're moving along a track, you're going to pick up some uh, an extra a bonus there of one. Uh, no, and no, no bonus obviously when you're not on a road. Extended movement for mechanized unit is going to allow you to increase your movement rate your by three MPs. And as long as you don't end in an ESOC, an enemy zone of control, you can certainly start in one, but you, uh, if, as long as you don't end in one, you pick up those extra three movement points. Tactical movement is the same as in all prior games. I believe there's no differences there. Uh, and the track list is where I mentioned to you earlier on that uh, you can only move basically two hexes uh, in a in the trackless area where you'll see that there's actually not even any zone, sorry, any hex outlines, right? Now, this uh, game also has trucks, and trucks are going to either mechanize an infantry unit and give it the ability to have a mechanized movement rate on a road, or it, they're going to and give them extended movement, or it's going to allow you to move supplies. And once you start moving as a mechanized unit, you, uh, as, or a truck-borne unit, you are going to stay that way for the balance of the turn. There is rail in this game as well. You can only move one rail unit, uh, and it's only the allies that can do that uh, per, per turn, I believe it is. There are off-map boxes you've got to manage here uh, as well. No big deal there. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Zones of controls where there's, there's a big... Uh, there's significant changes, right? No Zoc bonds in this game. No zone, to no zone of control bonds, right? <clears throat> and that's going to mean that things are done differently. There's a, a concept uh, of uh, limited zones of control and overlapping zones of control. And depending on what type of zone of control it is, it's going to impact your ability to move into and through those Zocs, right? So... So no Zoc bonds. Uh, if we look at this overlapping concept here, an overlapping Zoc is a Zoc, uh, a full zone of control that comes from two or more different units that are not adjacent to one another. Overlapping Zocs block retreats and lines of supply. That's the primary thing that they're good for. And a limited Zoc is simply uh, one which stretches either across an escarpment or into a into a fortification or some such like that. So I think I think that might be a, a, a pretty lightweight coverage of those, but that is kind of what I see here. Uh, let's see real quick, uh, attack supply. You, if, if you want to attack at full strength and use your arty and all the rest of it and other bits and pieces, you've got to use attack supply. There's some command and control concepts that uh, will allow you to uh, gain some benefits, but you've got to choose to use them uh, at the beginning of the turn, I believe it is. And uh, if you if you do, it's only available one turn. I'm just making sure that someone's not pulling up that I need to stop for. Nope, it's a dog. All right, so there's that. So attack supply is going to be important. No defense supply required. And in fact, you're, <clears throat> you're really not going to be... Uh, negatively affected if you're even if you're out of supply when you're defending you uh, it's one of the sort of core concepts in simonich's games is that defenders always defend at full strength I don't particularly agree with that but that is what it is uh there are overruns here where you can do get an automatic ds uh you can automatically eliminate units in the advanced rules or optional rules you can also potentially capture uh truck points uh, now, one thing that is different too also is there are a maximum number of attack factors and a maximum number of defending factors that can be any that can be used in any given attack or hex attacked. So I thought that was uh, pretty nifty. Uh, it sort of uh, prevents the uh, well the argument here is that it uh, it uh, prevents that factor uh, pecking and hunting that goes on. Standard rules apply for halving and doubling, as in all the games that have come in this series. Tank shifts are pretty much the same with uh, allowances for terrain, for like escarpments. Uh, elite combined arms, if you have 
Let me just double check this rule because let me just make sure that I write this one down here or did I just note it? Just checking here. Oh yeah, with the tax supply, you can't get your elite, you can't get your uh, uh, tank shift bonuses if you don't have a tax supply either. That's a, another important point. Now I didn't make a note here of, uh, where, where'd it go? What was I talking about here? Yeah, here it is here. Uh, if the attacker has both an elite tank unit and an elite infantry type uh, participating in the attack, then you're going to receive a column shift. Uh, so that's that's new, uh, bringing both armor and infantry that are elite into the same combat will will give you a boost. 88 millimeter flak units are going to uh, uh, earn you um, earn you a negative. DRM on defense. It'll give you a benefit on defense is what I'm trying to say there. Arty shifts pretty much standard here. I don't see too much difference. Uh, fortification uh, building is interesting in that you can, it only takes a turn to build them, but you've got to roll a die to see if they're completed and they may not complete on the turn. And uh, you do get some modifications as the turns go by, but uh, there's a little table for it. Uh, so I thought that was different. There were a couple other things I thought were interesting too. Uh, oh yeah, so combat results, it must be here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Uh, two, uh, two, two DD results, two, um, two retreats, I should say, are gonna, for are gonna force an elimination uh, on you. That's what I'm reading. Uh, and particularly if you do two, uh, and certainly two full retreats as well. No, actually, I think maybe two full retreats are okay. It's only if you, uh, it's only if you end up retreating and then have to retreat again. It gives you an elimination. I saw this here somewhere. Uh, you don't have to take losses from the, the most uh, valuable unit. Although, if you do have 88 millimeters involved in the attack, that may cause an extra step loss. Uh, standard things with determined defense, just some, some different uh, different modifiers for it. There's a die roll modifiers there on the top of the screen. Retreat procedures, this might be where this... Uh, um, elimination due to a retreat, here it is, yeah. Units eliminate if they retreat into the hexes listed below, but somewhere in here it says something about uh, combat against previously retreated units. Yeah, if a unit or a stack is retreated into friendly occupied hex, yada yada. No, that's not it. Stopping a retreat after a, like, at least one hex. Surrender. How units surrender? Oh, non mechanized units surrender if they are forced to retreat more than two hexes or if forced to retreat twice in the same combat phase. See, I, I thought I did have it. Okay, so there we go. So that, I thought that was interesting. Uh, full retreat, pretty much the same concept there. I think there's a, some minor minor changes there. Advance after combat is uh, standard, fair, and all uh, listed very clearly on the CRT. It's all very nicely done. You get the same idea with breakthrough con breakthrough combat after a successful attack. The CRT will tell you if you're eligible for one, and then you can go and mess around with that. It all works pretty normally. Supply sources, uh, as you would imagine. And supply, you know, you've got this whole to brook concept, and then you've got uh, uh, so you can ship supplies into to brook. You've got uh, these ASUs and SPs that can uh, um, function as uh, supply units for you, and you sp spend those as needed. Uh, you've got to truck them up to where they need to be or ship them into where they need to be. There are some special units in the game. Not going to waste too much time on that. Air, uh, there's some different air concepts. There's some stra strafing and air support and access air transport as well. Haven't delved too deeply into there. I really did just uh, take a quick squeeze at that and note the rules references. Uh, they do have the long range desert rats in here, which are basically going to work similar to uh, this concept of delay. Uh, strafing is allowing you to put a, a marker down on the map and uh, it's going to give you this delay effect which is basically adding movement points to the cost of a given hex and the uh, long range desert group just does the same sort of thing. Alright, replacements are pretty 
standard from what I recall. And then there are a couple of pages on naval transportation, uh, whether you are going uh, within theatre or out of theatre. Uh, you can damage the uh, you can damage the ports, either uh, the enemy can or you can self inflict. And you can also uh, have these, these concepts of convoy attacks as well. Uh, so, and then there's, uh, there's an events table, which I haven't looked at in detail, but nevertheless, uh, there are events that may give you some benefits or detract from uh, your efforts as well. And I thought that was pretty, pretty nifty. Three, is it three scenarios? I think it's only three scenarios. Uh, campaign game, obviously, Rommel's arrival. And then uh, Operation Crusader. Yeah, and that's it. <clears throat> uh, and so the three things that I took away from this uh, with the set of rules was, uh, one, managing the movement of supply uh, from east to west and west to east uh, for both sides is going to be critical, uh, as will taking care of the naval transportation side of things and making sure that either uh, Tobruk is consistently supplied so that your units that are on defense there have artillery support and or have uh, supply as well. Uh, so then that will then lead you to making sure that those ASUs are managed correctly. Uh, you're going to need to be able to do that for, uh, for yourself, otherwise you're going to get yourself into trouble. And then resource points, there are so there are now so and there's obviously there's a Rommel counter in here as well that, that uh, provides some benefits. Uh, but uh, along with the long range desert rats and uh, a, a host of other little bits and pieces, there are many things, air units, etc. There are many things to choose from in terms of allocating resource points. And so you're going to have to be very thoughtful about what you use, what you buy, and when you use them, you can accumulate. You can accumulate resource points. So, you've, but you, but if you if your track is full, you're done. So uh, that you lose those points. So it's going to be uh, there's I think a little more uh, detail perhaps required in terms of your thinking to manage the resources that you potentially have, knowing what you're going to do over a given turn or in the next two or three turns, do I need supply points? Do I need Rommel? Do I need air? Do I need long range desert rats? Do I need all these various other things that uh, are available to you to take advantage of? So uh, that's those were the three primary takeaways I saw that will influence your gameplay uh, fairly significantly, I think, based on my first read of the rules and my Two pages of notes that I have here for uh, air and air supply and uh, resource points and stuff like that. And your your, your resources your resource points are not a fixed amount each turn. You're rolling dice for them as well, so that's uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. All right, that's all I had for you. Just want to give a quick little well, that's 18 minutes, but there you go, 18 minute uh, overview of the rules and some of the nuances and differences. Probably did not catch all of it, so please don't get angry if I miss something that you think is important. Just make a comment and share and let everybody else know. Okay, go roll some dice. Ciao.